So nice to see you guys again today. I'm going to give the, ne the next session in tracker data creation and upload. Um, so if we come back to this picture that we have already seen during this workshop, um, what we have done so far is to initialize the D2, so initialize the SDK. We did the login, so we are able to um, interact with the local database and the, and the server. We sync the metadata, we sync the data, and now we are going to focus in this other part, which is how to do the work, how to do the offline work, and then how to how we do how uh, do we upload the data. So our focus today is going to be tracker data. Um, aggregated data will also be covered in workshop two. Um, it's the same princip principles. Uh, you can refer to the docs, but if you want to explore by yourself, it's it's pretty similar. But uh, yeah, today we are going to focus only in tracker data. Okay, so um, how do we add the data in our local database? Uh, the entry point is the repositories. Um, and once we uh, use the repositories, uh, the data is stored persistently in the database and marked as not synced. And then the, we have uh, an upload method uh, that you have. we have to call explicitly to upload the data to the server. So it's really important to understand that once we uh, save some data, we're just saving that uh, in the local database in the device, but unless we explicitly call upload, we are not yet uploading it to the server. Okay, so I'm going to recap a little bit in, uh, in the repositories. Um, since they are the entry point for creation, the creation and the addition of the data. And we have a different strategy uh, for identifiable and not non-identifiable objects. Um, so we have two different types of repositories. We have the collection repositories, which are the, the repositories that we can access directly using the D2 in, and their um, structure in each model. And then we have the object repositories. The first one, the collection repositories, uh, represent the collection of objects. The second one represents a single object. Um, these ones are different for identifiable objects, which are the ones that have an UID, um, and for non identifiable objects. Um, so the way to get them uh, for identifiable objects is to uh, use the UID uh, method in the collection repository. But for the ones that are not identifiable, the way to get them is to call the value uh, um, the value um, method and then pass the properties that make this value or this object unique. Uh, so this is the way to get the object repositories that we are going to need to edit the data. So first I'm going to explain uh, how do we create uh, data in identifiable object collections? Uh, for that, uh, we have uh, um, an add method in the collection repository. So we have to first uh, find the module and the collection repository using D2 from the collection where, that we want to, where we want to add a met, uh, an object to. And then we call the app method. And what do we have to pass to this app method? We pass the projection, which is an object which contains only the mandatory fields for this type. So we are not going to pass in all the fields that uh, uh, we can configure or we can set in a track and attract the instances, for uh, instance, for example, we are only passing the mandatory object, so it's uh, really easy to create an object, and then afterwards we can uh, edit the rest of the properties. Once we call this add method and insert the projection, the object is stored in the database and we get the UID. So with this UID, we can continue editing and operating with this object. So here, um, in a more detailed way, we can see that um, this projection uh, for tracked distances, the only thing that we are passing in the beginning is the organization unit and the tracking unit side. And we will add more things like the attributes 
and more stuff afterwards. Okay, so we once we have created this um, uh, this object, or if the object was already existing in the database, we can access their their object repository and set or edit um, all their properties. Uh, this uh, that I'm showing now is the five different repositories that we have for tracker data. So in the track entity module, we have the track to the instances repository. Uh, you use the UAD method to get the object repository. In the enrollment module, we have the enrollments, uh, sorry, enrollment module enrollment repository. Then we have the events, the nodes, and finally the file resources. Okay, so once we have this object repository, how can we edit the property? Uh, we have different write methods um, in this object repository. For each property that we can we can modify, we have a set whatever uh, property. So for example, set coordinates and we pass the coordinates or set date, repeat, we set the date. So we have one for each different uh, property that we have in the in this object. And then we have methods to delete or delete if exists, for example. Um, apart from the write methods that we can use to modify these properties, we also have some of the read methods if we want to check what, it's, what do we have in the, in the database. Okay, so I already explained how do we create and modify objects uh, which are identifiable. I'm going to explain now what happens with the ones that are not identifiable. So um, for non-identifiable objects, we don't need to first create and then modify since it's only a value, we can just put the value and it doesn't matter if it was already present or not. Uh, so the way we do that is uh, we call in the repository, we call the value, we pass the, uh, the attributes that identify this, uh, this value, and then we can call the different methods that I'm going to present now. Uh, the two different repositories or collections that we have for tracker data are the tracked entity attribute values and the tracked entity data values. And what are the methods that we can that we can use? In this case, we only have a set value, so we don't have different properties. We just have the value, so we have a set value where we pass the value as a string, and we also have the delete or delete if exists method. As uh, as in the identifiable, we also have some read only methods like get or exists. Okay, so so far. With this that we have done, uh, we have updated the local database, but we haven't uploaded anything to the server. Like we said, we have to have in our minds that there are two different processes, editing the data and uploading it to the server. Um, so if we want to upload it, uh, we have to call the upload method. In case of tracker data, what we have is a method in the tracked entity instance repository. And if we don't specify anything, um, the SDK will upload to the server all the um, all the objects that are in state to post or to update it. This is a state. This state is something that is internal in the SDK. To post are all the objects that are created locally, uh, and we don't have we haven't sent them yet to the to the server, and to update. Uh, means objects that are already in the server, but we have some, we have done some, we have done some modifications. And if we do this, we are going to upload all this, um, all the files. Sorry, all the all the objects. But we can also restrict it. This is what we call granular sync, um, and we can use. Uh, filters the same way that we use filters, for example, to get information from the repositories. Uh, we, we can use these filters to restrict the amount of data that we are uploading. So if, for example, we say here, okay, track the distance by UID and we specify the UID and call the upload method, we're only going to upload this file and not the others. 
um, we can also use any other filters. We could say, okay, by name, and we just upload uh, the tracking distances by name or by any other property that you can that you can think of. Okay, so we are going to do one exercise. Uh, this is going to be a bit more complex than the ones that we have done so far, uh, but uh, it will be guided by your instructors. So um, I hope you we all manage to, to solve it. Um, I'm going to open the, um, the skeleton app to show you what we are going to do. Uh, just a second. All right. So we are going to use the code executor activity uh, that you can find here in the lateral menu. Here at the bottom, you have code executor. And this is an activity that we have uh, where we can run completely custom code. So basically we have a button here below and we are going to implement something that is going to run when we click this button. And what we're going to implement is the creation of a track in the distance. We're going to create the track in the distance and roll it to a program and uh, add some attributes for it. Okay, so um, what we are going to do in the, in the exercise is just the creation. It will be uh, starting the database. So once we do it, if we're right, we should come here to the tracking distances uh, page. And we should be able to see the day that we have created in the exercise. Since it's not uploaded yet, you will see that there will be a sync method here. So we are going to click here after we have, uh, we have finished it, we are going to click on the sync method and we are going to go to the um, DHIS2 website and look for this um, look for this day, so we can verify that everything was created and synchronized up uh, with the server. Okay. So more into the details of the of the exercise, um, we are going to create a tracking instance. Uh, we have some tips there that you can follow. Uh, that will also be in the in the code of the of the exercise. We are going to enroll it to a program, and we are going to set its uh, program tracked entity instance attribute values. All right. Uh, the branch that we are starting from is Academy Online Exercise Four. Uh, I think it's actually Exercise Four uh, Data Creation or something like that. Um, let me verify it. Um, it's exercise for tracker data creation. Um, and I think we can just go now to the breakout rooms and uh, continue on our own with the facilitators. <laughs> 